Hello out there and welcome to a new episode here at the Virtual Frontier, the podcast about virtual teams created by a virtual team. Today's topic of our Q&A session is developing new leadership style while working remotely. Have you recently stepped up to a leadership role? Has your startup grown and you're trying to find ways how to work with the changing dynamics in your teams? Probably you're an experienced leader, but you wonder how you can improve your leadership style while working remotely. Then this episode is especially for you. Let's dive into the next CEO Q&A session here at the Virtual Frontier. See you in just a moment. Yeah, hello, Manuel. Welcome here to a new Q&A session at the Virtual Frontier. Um, as just mentioned, you have a nice uh, afternoon here as well, a beautiful morning here. So let's kick it off. Um, our topic today is uh, how to develop uh, leadership uh, skills and leadership styles uh, in, in your personal life and business as well. And um, just to get started, I, I would like to ask you, because nobody is born as a, as a leader, um, how was uh, your own, own um, journey on that uh, when you started um, back in the 2000s? Um, um, with your own company and then things got uh, bigger and bigger and your team grow and um how, how was it for you uh, when when you recognized oh i i should start uh, working uh, on my leadership skills in a structured way maybe there's a little story that we can share with our audience oh yeah there are many stories so i think in the beginning i had really no idea about leadership i just uh, knew what it means to build a team to lead a team from sports um, because I did that um, a lot in, in the past before I became an entrepreneur, but um, really what that means, what leadership means and management and the difference and how I should actually do that, I had no idea. So that resulted in me building a team of like people that were just in my environment, people that I somehow liked, like people from the university where I studied computer science. And it was really all about People, I had a great idea. I didn't even know exactly what I want to build, which kind of business. And then I hired people for the team and they did some work and they always did what I told them to do. So if I didn't tell them anything, they didn't do anything. So that was all depending on myself, right? And if we didn't get the results, I had to push them harder so that we like reach a deadline, get the results I wanted. And very often they didn't even have an idea why that is so important for me and why I'm pushing that so hard and why I want this result. And uh, I've grown the business for a long time with this kind of leadership style because that was what I learned from other businesses around me. And that led to a point, I mean, if you are following this podcast or watch my TEDx talk, you know that in 2018, I almost crashed my business against the wall because of Many things like a project crash, which is also related to leadership, like hiring the wrong people, which is also related to leadership, leading the people wrong, or in other words, managing them instead of leading them. And as a result, everything depended on me with 10 to 14 hour workdays. Growing my business just meant growing my stress and my problems and my workload. And then I realized I had to change something because the situation kicked my butt heavily. <laughs> Um, but I had no idea exactly what mm. that was and what that meant. And I thought I adapted my leadership style. And um, then I hired a lot of people that were smarter than me and more experienced than I was. And they gave me some hard time with direct feedback. And then I decided I, I have to learn that first. I have to understand what that means, what leading means compared to managing. And even more importantly, what is the kind of business I want to build and what's the mission of the business? Not just as an abstract word, something written on paper and pencil, um, just what am I building here when I see myself as a business owner and which role do people play in that business and how do they actually take ownership of these roles and why should they do this? Because great talent has the opportunity to work everywhere and anywhere, so why should they work with me? And how can they be successful? 
So it's a lot about figuring it out. What, how, why, who, when? Like these questions, I didn't ask them myself in the beginning. It was just, okay, I want to build a business. I need people to get the work done. So find people, get the work done. But yeah, this is limited if everything depends on me. And then I, I learned a little bit about coaching. I learned a little bit about uh, holacracy, self-managing teams and all this stuff. And what I, I like most when it comes to working with people is if they really want to do their job because they like their job and if they want to work self-determined independent and with whom they want and where they want so basically they are self-driven people that's what really motivates me when i work with self-driven people with self-managing teams because that removes me as the bottleneck the business grows independently from me that reduces my workload my stress and people will see that they are empowered and even more successful than if I am always the person in the middle. So that's the story in a nutshell. And if you want to join the drama, you can Google my TEDx talk, yep. just Manuel Pistner TEDx, and you will find that. And for sure, we're going to link that uh, below in the show notes. Yeah. Um, Manuel, when, when we talk about leadership um, uh, styles and the development for them, um, there are like some basic, um, aspects or some basic parts that, uh, that needs to be covered. Um, I'm going to throw it, uh, um, some, some of those terms that, that I have, uh, prepared, uh, up front. And maybe you can just, um, give your own perspective. What, what, what is, what it means for you and maybe an insight how, uh, someone that, uh, is listening today, um, could per, per, uh, possibly work on that on his, uh, mm. self. So, um, the first term is building trust. Uh, I think that, uh, um, of course, um, you need to be patient. Um, it's nothing that comes from today, tomorrow, but yeah, we'll pay yeah. out in the long term. Yeah, building trust is a big thing, right? So what I figured out is that I, in the early days, I wasn't able to trust other people because I didn't have trust in my own capabilities. I wasn't born as a business owner and I wasn't born as an entrepreneur. So I literally had no idea about building a business and I somehow knew that. And that made it hard for me to really set a direction and trust in myself that the direction is the right one, because it was hard for me to set the direction as I very often didn't even know the goal. So if you know, don't know the goal, you cannot set the direction, right? And um, that led to situations that I shifted and course corrected very often. And people always felt like this is a lack of trust in them. But actually, it was trust in, a lack of trust in myself. So the first step is to really trust in your own capabilities, no matter if you have all the skills or not, but you need to be convinced that you need to commit to one direction and then go for it and don't change that so often. You can change the tactics, but the overall, overall strategy when it comes to building the business, building the teams, leading the teams, that should stay stable, right? So, and then you need to make sure that you know like how you can see if everyone is getting the results that move the business forward and if those people can also see these results with numbers with kpis with figures right and you see so that is how trust works for me if i can see that people do what they say and if people care about these results instead of just me pushing these people to look at the numbers and then come up with a solution how to fix them and improve them if they instead come to me because they say, look, we have to improve this. That is my idea. What's your feedback, Manuel? Then I, I win a lot of trust because I see that people care. And when people do what they say, that's the definition for me of building trust, right? If a person says A, but does B, how should I win trust? And um, yeah, that is, that, is, that is crucial. I would say that is, that is everything. If you don't trust your team, if you don't trust yourself, you need to work on that first. Yeah. Uh, um, of course, this is, this is, this is, I guess, the, the one, one of the most important basics that you need to get right first and, and work on that constantly. Um, next point would be the credibility. I know you from now for, I guess, a little bit more than three years. And, mm -hmm. uh, I find that you're, you're a very credible person because, um, when we started work together, um, the, the narrative never changed. Yeah. We mm -hmm. were, we still, still, when you talk about uh, business and about how the development goes, um, it's always the same, but yeah, take it over. 
Yeah, can be a little bit boring, but I think consistency is important, right? Um, as I said before, we worked together before 2018. I corrected the strategy a lot because I literally, I had no idea which kind of business I wanted to build. I had just the, the shiny object syndrome that most business owners have, right? The grass is always greener on the other side. So I always compared myself to others Then thought, mm, my business is not so good. I course correct and do something else. That's why I've also created many other businesses always to just try if there is something better. But uh, the consistency is so important for the credibility for the for the team, because if you change things all the time, you won't get stability. And if you don't have stability in terms of people doing the same thing again and again and getting really good at it and getting better every day, then you won't grow something big because you don't have any alignment. And that's why consistency is important, because otherwise you cannot get the alignment over a long period of time. And that means you will give up on the journey without reaching significant results. And yeah, for me, it's all about building a, an environment that has a true value, of course, for our clients. Otherwise, the business can't exist, but also is aligned with the values um, and the interests of our team, um, which is basically that people working with me also want to have freedom, independence, um, and yeah, some adventure maybe while working. And that is an important core value of myself and the business. And I will never change that. That's why I mm -hmm. think you see me with a high credibility and persistence in these things. Okay. Um, next point would be uh, giving a perspective to your, um, the people that you work with. Yes. So I think that is one of the core skills a leader needs to develop. And that's the main difference between leadership and management because a leader needs to make sure that the team understands the mission, the vision, and most importantly, the direction the team should move forward or towards to with their daily activities while a manager typically knows the vision and the, the direction but keeps that hidden from the team and just tells the team what they should do and not why they should do it so there is no way to build self-managing teams without a leader that gives perspective to the team and um, yeah as a result everything depends on the manager so leadership i would say is all about giving people a perspective and most importantly aligning people um, or the interests of people with the direction and the interests of the business. Because if you have true alignment of all interests, alignment of interests of your clients with the shareholders of the business, with the team members that run the business, then I think the business can like grow crazily because, yeah, you have something that contributes value to every part of the business, not just for the shareholders, not just for the clients. Mm -hmm but for everyone. And a leader needs to make sure that this alignment is given and it starts with the direction. If you don't know like your goal in which direction you want to move, you cannot give a direction for your team. So a leader needs to have crystal clarity about that and then bring that to the team. Speaking about the team, um, probably there comes a point um, when you as a CEO, business owner and leader um, work, are working with a team and you start uh, to see that um, people in your team need also to work on their leadership skills uh, and styles. How I go for that? Um, what should I consider? What is important when I approach someone in my team? Uh, see, let's say um, when I see there is some, some need of, of development or there should be uh, improvement in some place, how I go for that and how, how should I approach this person and what should I consider there? Yeah, I think, first of all, be a role model, have a good leadership style, because it's easiest for people to just like shadow someone else, shadow a good leader and um, copy the leadership, uh, leadership habits and leadership routines from the person they shadow or copy. I think that is an important thing. So now there are people that have a natural leadership um, skill set, which is empathy. I didn't have that. Um, also... They need to be able to plan. They need to be very open and transparent. They need to be excellent communicators, but not just communicators about what's important for them, but translate the requirements and needs of the leader and the business into requirements that align with the interests of the team. And it's hard to find good leaders because I would say our society is not built on leadership. It's more built on, on management and constraints. 
Uh, but still, there are some natural born leaders. And yeah, if you find such a person, just give them the freedom, set direction, let them go and offer them support. I think that is the way to to develop other leaders. But being a role model is the most important part. Mm -hmm. um, you just uh, uh, scratched it a little bit and uh, I would uh, like to uh, expand it. Um, when you work with uh, different team members, you have uh, different ideas, um, maybe different some different interests on how to get uh, to, to a solution for a problem. And what you need there as a leader is uh, really important are negotiation skills. Um, what are the basics there? Um, why is it important and how to, um, for, for more, uh, more importantly, how to ask the right questions uh, to get to a, um, a point where you say, okay, we can take it from there. Both parties um, have uh, common ground uh, to go from there on in the future. Um, how do how you work on that? <laughs> Leave your ego at home, <laughs> I would say, because if, if, if you are a person that just wants to be right, then the negotiation is all about proving the other person that he or she is wrong. And that doesn't really feel empowering for the person that is now shown that he or she is wrong. And it's always you as the leader that will make the decision and then everything depends on you. So you just create more dependencies instead of um, self-managing people and self-driven people. Um, that is one very important part. The negotiation should not be about you and me. The negotiation should be about the objective and the objective or the decision we make regarding the, this objective should be aligned with the goal that the person should reach, that the team, the person is working in should reach and that the team should reach aligned with the goals of the business. As an example, we just had that, Daniel, when we discussed about some tools that you suggested, like you suggested we should use this and this and that tool. What I said is, um, do we really need to introduce another tool? I'm not convinced by that. But then you translated why you think introducing this new tool will contribute to the results that we want. And then it makes sense to me. So I challenged you about this statement of introducing another tool. I leave the decision up to you, but I want you to think about the goal and how your activity and decisions contribute to this goal. Right then, it's not about my opinion. It's about okay, how can we both align that this is a good decision that improves our opportunity to reach our goals and improve our results? And I think this is what is required when it comes to negotiations in teams that are driven by leaders, not managers. Okay, man. Um, influencing. It's not about coerce others um, to do things they don't want. And uh, it's not about playing out your own hidden agenda. But uh, when it's not that, what, what is influencing uh, about? Yeah, it's about um, not managing people because you have your own interests and your hidden agenda and you want other people to do something that only you want. Influencing is giving other people a reason and a why and a perspective so that they understand why they should do it. Other people might see that as manipulation. Yes, it is manipulation, but it's manipulation for a good purpose because if your business has um, a vision, a mission, and I would say values that align with the interest of people and you can make these things visible for people so that they are driven by themselves and take the right action to achieve the goals they want to achieve, the team wants to achieve, and the business wants to achieve then things become a lot easier and then people will become more successfully. So a leader and when it comes to influencing people is all about helping other people being successful. That's uh, and, and not as a perspective of a people manager, not pushing people to do what I want so that I am successful. It's really about people being successful and you support them, facilitate them and lead them, basically influence them so they apply the right habits, do the right works to get the results. Yeah. Last question for today, Manuel. Um, I want to be a better listener, um, but my mind is always spinning when I'm talking to someone and uh, I, I'm, I always have uh, the answer uh, up front. So I, how, how can I be a better listener? <laughs> Just shut up and listen. I mean, <laughs> that's it. I mean, you, you in, the biggest thing is, in a, is, a, is really burn the boats, right? And inform everyone that you want to develop a new habit. 
That's what I did. I remember this. I was oh. also a poor listener. And I, I told people, look, I know I'm a poor listener and I want to improve that. So I need to change my environment so that it supports me to become a better listener. And I informed everyone that I have this, um, this goal to become a better listener and to interrupt me whenever I interrupt someone else because I think I know the answer. I already need to tell them what I think and so on. And that was really hard in the beginning. And without an environment that supported me with that, I think I would not have improved that skill. But meanwhile, it's really about, yeah, developing the mindset, not of being judgmental, but more curious, right? When you have the mindset of being judgmental, mm. like, okay, I have to talk to this guy and I know what he or she wants and it's always the same and I have no idea why I should have this meeting. Then you have the mindset of, okay, it makes no sense to talk to this person and you will start interrupting all the time. But if you have the mindset of even... If you had other experience in the past, if you develop the mindset of being curious, like asking yourself the question, okay, what can I learn from this person? So what could be exciting about that? How can I spend the time most meaningful with this person? What can I contribute to the conversation? You cannot be curious without listening. So that is, I think, changing the perspective and changing your environment that supports you and blocks you when you just fall into your old habits. For me, it was the most effective one. Nice one. Manuel, thank you very much for your time today. Um, I think we'll wrap it up and uh, see each other next week for a new Q&A session here at the Virtual Frontier. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you very much. Take care. Building trust, working on your credibility, finding a common ground, and deeply engaging with the people on your team are all important steps, whatever leadership style you might tend to. I hope you had some takeaways on how to develop your leadership skills further and build happy and trustful environments from anywhere you and your teams are working. Folks, before you leave, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumb up and share it around with your friends and colleagues. Sign up for the free business builder training on fleshup.io and learn more about how to scale with your business at any time, working with global top talents and make work better. On behalf of the team here at the Virtual Frontier, I want to thank you for listening. So until the next episode, keep exploring new frontiers.